So as we begin to bring the energy into a quieter place, a more receptive place, just let your body and your consciousness settle a little bit in this moment and take a breath. And know that there is nothing for you to do, just to be right here with us, with the beautiful energy of love and family. And let yourself feel the blessings in the room that you create, that we create together. feeling the energy of the cosmos coming in through the crown of your head and just settling for a moment in your heart, saying hello. And then moving through your body, down your legs, into your feet, connecting with our beautiful Mother Gaia, right here, right now in this room, and letting yourself just find the stillness of that connection between heaven and earth. And in that stillness is that beautiful heart of yours, that space where your breath lives, where your light lives, where the softness of divine love always, always lives for you. Even when we forget, it's still there waiting for you to take another breath and move through your body, your consciousness, into that place of receiving divine love. Greetings, dear ones. I'm Kryon of Magnetic Service. Take a moment and honor that which is here. I would not tell you things that are not so. There is a maturity of awareness that is in the room that lays upon you like a blanket of benevolence as it honors the role of the old soul in the future. And what we are going to speak of in these short moments has been spoken of many times through the years. And we're going to give a, a summation of it today pulling it all together in this particular year the year of two we call it year two because it is the second year of acceleration of the new energy the first year being 2014 this being the second things are beginning to shift on the planet dramatically unexpected things to your psyche are before you. We have told you not to despair, do not worry, that it is part of a recalibration of everything. And we've asked you to see and feel the benevolence of God in all of it. And then there are the instructions for you. Old soul, you are beginning to recalibrate how you feel about God. What follows should have a title. And humans love titles, so we will call it accelerated awareness, the rise of spiritual common sense. It is time for you to finally understand and separate 
in a mature way the consciousness of the creator versus the consciousness of a human. Many years ago, I told my partner to write a book called Don't Think Like a Human. <laughs> to this day, the title is catchy, and many agree that this would be nice. Now, it's a prerequisite. And we're going to give you a number of attributes. I'll even call them items that are that are things to work on and understand and to realize that are they're involved in everyday life and you will relate to these things because they are how humanity has worked with God in the past we've given you channels through the years it told you not to take the consciousness of humans and place it upon God. And this is another one of them. Only this one is maybe perhaps a wrap up. In the reality of what follows in your lives. For you to take this information seriously. Pass it around. Give others the information, perhaps by having them read or listen to these words. As we discuss a beautiful, beautiful system. Dear ones, how do you perceive God? In an old energy, that is to say, the energy that humans have always been in up to this point, there has been perhaps a bias. And the bias is that you think of God as a parent figure. You even name some of your religious leaders father. And the paradigm of parenting, therefore, is what you would then apply to the creator of the universe. It's the best you had. It's honoring in your mind. But dear ones, in the parenting and humans to children, you have also applied all of the other human attributes that parents would have, that fathers would have. And they would be a list that is endless. And they would all be human emotion. Anger. Punishment, control, do as you're told, authority, on and on. You have the idea that God is the shepherd and you are the sheep. And this has been used over and over in a, in a very benevolent way of how you should then see the creator of the universe. The father syndrome. It's the first one we tell you to break. 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 There is no relationship like parenting when it comes to the almighty. You are family, but we are not parents. We are the family with you. We are your best friend, your brother, and your sister. We are spiritual lovers of humanity. There is no anger. There is no punishment. There is no punishment. Dear ones, your life here is by your agreement with the Creator in order for a test of energy, and that is all it is. You're not in a scenario of good and bad punishment. All of the things that, that humans do with humans it's not what God does. How can we then show you or tell you? Can you understand the statement, the creator of the universe is not a human? Does not have human consciousness. Does not have human nature. Therefore, does not have anger. Does not have punishment. Doesn't want to control. And you're not sheep. Could it be any clearer? The closer you get to the source which is inside you, which is God, 
the more you will feel this arrangement we have. One single hand reaches out to you that is the creator and is all that is. Asking you to take it. Not so you will be controlled as sheep, but so you will be included in the creative source. The closer you get through your higher self to that which is this creative source which you call God, the stronger influence of compassion you will have on this planet. Like the masters that came before you who were not angry and who did not punish and did not want you to be sheep. That's number one. Could it be any clearer to change the paradigm of the relationship to the part of you which is creation? We're looking at all of these things closely. And we have so many of them. There are those in this room who wanted to hear this, who've been climbing steps all their life in order to satisfy something they believe that spirit wants, who have suffered enough. I want to just hear these few things that you should know. Dear ones, there is no hierarchy. Could it be that there is nobody in charge? <laughs> it is a human attribute. Don't you understand this? In order for you to group together and accomplish anything, there's a structure. It's human. It's everywhere. There's always somebody in charge. Always. No matter where you go, no matter what you do, even the hermit in the field, somebody owns the field. Someone's in charge. Somebody has to, to be there. Even in the middle of the ocean, someone's in charge. You'll say, well, now it is Neptune. <laughs> Now it is Mother Nature. There's always a force above you. And you apply that situation, a hierarchy, to God. You have created that which is hierarchical even in the angels. You have master angels. You have ones that are in charge of others. You've got books filled of who answers to whom. And they don't. And they don't. You see the structure of spirit, of what you call God, is different than you would imagine. There is one consciousness that is in charge. And one consciousness is also the family. It is hard to describe to you a multidimensional aspect that you do not have. Imagine for a moment there was a consciousness that everyone had and you were all in charge. If you had that, then there would be no followers. There would be no less than. You'd all know what to do instantly and would do it in complementary fashion with the others because you were all in charge. You saw what had to be done. You would then have the solutions all together as one. That is the mind of God. The angelic beings are not in a hierarchy. You say there is Archangel Michael. Michael would be the first to tell you there isn't. But honors the fact that you would see there was in order to facilitate yourselves and be comfortable in 3D. Do you see? It is time to get out of the fallacies of an old energy 
where you apply all human nature to God. Number three, you always have to pay something to get something. You have applied this to absolutely everything in your life. Even physics sees a certain way of the way things work in three dimension where there's no such thing as free energy it simply changes its form you've got to pay the price in order to move from A to B there has to be a transition even in physics energy must move this way in order for you to get this there is a payment plan for everything and you applied that to God oh did you so here comes the creating force of the universe. And the first thing you're going to ask is, what do I have to do? If you give up your energy, if you're going to count some beads, if you're going to do something, it's going to be to pay spirit so that you can exist as good in the eyes of God. Let me tell you something. You are born magnificent and perfect and always are. Always are. There is nothing you can do that will diminish you in the eyes of the Creator. Oh, you may disappoint yourself. You may disappoint society. You are here for a reason, and the test is here. You may make some funny decisions that other humans don't like, and God loves you the same. Did you hear that? And when you die, and transfer energy for a moment to my side of the veil before you return. When you do, there is a party that celebrates that which you did called living life on the planet and being part of the puzzle. Everyone, from the minister to the one in prison, do you hear me? And this does not compute, does it? It doesn't work for you. Anyone listening to my voice, I'll tell you, you say, there has to be a punishment, a payment. You have to pay to get something. No, you don't. You arrived on this planet on purpose, and you didn't pay anybody to get here. And it wasn't a punishment. Why do you assign negative and positive energies to everything that happens. And you do. That is human nature. Every single organization that is spiritual, including this one, if you want to call it an organization, it's an organization of consciousness, has that in it. There's got to be something you must do to have the favor of God. And then you ask, am I doing it right? Oh, yes, you are. By being in the chair and loving God, you're doing it right. There are certain societies where human beings act like children who are spiritual and they don't know any better. And it still goes on. Charlatans who know far, far better will tell you that for a certain price they can forgive your sins or propel you in heaven or even affect your ancestors and you hand over the money. This is still on today. Dear old soul, break this paradigm in any way you can. When anybody talks to you, about reward and punishment and payment. When it comes to the Almighty, you tell them you're part of the family and you're all paid up, all right? <laughs> there are those, so many, who besiege God right now, right this moment, in prayer, bending over and saying, how can we get clean in the eyes of God? And they don't know. They were never dirty. Who told them they were dirty? And why would they? Break the paradigm. Born magnificent. Family and clean. Forever. 
Your timing, number four, is not God's timing. And yet you make it that way. It's a habit that way. My partner even gave a full lecture series and recorded a video about it because it is so prevalent among you. Somebody has to hear this. You came today to hear this. When you get a strong intuition about something that may be in your future, you take it and you hold it to yourself and you thank God for finally giving you some instructions on what to do. You're going to go over here, you're going to start a school, you're going to write a book. You're going to do this, you're going to do that. And then you do it. And it doesn't work. It doesn't work spectacularly. It fails. Use the word. And then what do you do? You do the human thing. You say, what did I do wrong? How did I displease God? All of those things are simply running in circles of human nature and not having any idea about how the Creator works. If any of you at any time get a message about something that is coming or an inkling or a feeling, I want you to promise me you'll have common sense that is spiritual and see it for what it is. What it is is a potential that may very well happen and the synchronicity will be created when it's time and not on your clock. I want to show you why you do what you do and we've, dis we've discussed this before. All of human nature has the authority figure asking you to do something or telling you to do something and you doing it immediately. When your father said clean up your room, when were you supposed to do it? When your boss tells you they want something, when were you supposed to do it? And the answer is always now. So spirit gives you intuition about something that's going to happen, something that's in the works, or for you, something you're supposed to do, and you instantly knee-jerk it into reality now. <laughs> and it fails. Promise me that you will have the wherewithal and the maturity to say, thank you, God, for this information. It's beautiful. And I will wait patiently for the synchronicity that will begin to realize and fulfill this. For I am family and I understand the principles of synchronicity and the timing of spirit. I want you to see it in the bigger picture. These things that you are working on are potentials. You may be shown something far before someone else who will be part of it is shown. You're going to have to wait for them. For things to come together in a synchronicity, in a society of free choice, they also may change. They may morph into something else and you will be given that. And yet there are humans that are angry at God because they didn't get number one, they got number two. And when you ask them, well, number two was better, and you say, yes, but number one is what he told me. What did I do wrong? Not understanding. God does not have a list for you. <laughs> These are energies of potential and the timing of spirit not on your clock. Promise me that you won't launch out just because you got the message or the inkling. But that you will wait in a mature fashion for the timing of spirit and know it when you see it and be comfortable with it. Old soul, mature, common sense should prevail. Number five, the last one. Purpose. How many sales meetings have you attended? <laughs> and they all tell you the same thing. In order to have, have something happen, you, you have to have a goal. It would be help, helpful to, to paste things magnetically on the refrigerator to remind you. 
Maybe you should go to meetings where other people have the same goals and reiterate them. None of that is what God has. None of that. And we said it before. Your purpose on the planet has nothing to do with your works. Did you hear that? There are sayings that some of you have heard all your life. By your works will you be known. Let me tell you another saying. By your magnificence on the planet will you be known. Which is you in the chair listening today. How about that? By your magnificence of being a human and going through this, will you be known? Not by what you do while you're here. The magnificence of the old soul will be increased even more through compassionate action, and we have said that. That's what you're here for. If you really want a goal, I will give it to you. Compassionate action. Live like a master. And you will say to me, it's hard. <laughs> and I will say to you, that's why we call you light worker. It's hard. It is. You have the maturity and the life experience on this planet to achieve all that you set out to achieve. In this life and others that you will live, by your magnificence, will you be known as those who will create peace on earth and take it into ascension eventually. That's how we know you, family. By your name and lights. Your name, sung in the light form. That's how we know you. And that's real different from having a goal. All of the things that we have given you this day are things of human nature pasted upon the countenance of God. And it would include almost every single one of the structures of that which is spiritual in any organization on the planet. And we ask you to change it. And when you begin to do this, dear ones, you're going to find an increase in love, benevolence, understanding, and peace. You realize there's no more steps to climb to please God. All you have to do is open the door and take the hand of the family that you are. Could it be simpler? Dear ones, this is the message, profound, complete, and so it is.